Hi, 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 and welcome to 12 Days of Creativity, a challenge where we're gonna make a track in 12 steps during December. If you would like to join our challenge, the link is below. Today's step is focusing fully on bass. And you know what? My approach to my song is that I wanted to try some little bit different type of techniques and get me outside of the box so i prepared my nord drum 3b as well as my iii headphones which are wireless and let me walk around in the studio freely as much as i want actually when i got them i did this brilliant tiktok on the topic and i was just kind of like impressed how they came out as modular so it means this like you can build them by yourself so you can replace all the stuff really easily if they get broken and i love the design pretty so now with the wireless headphones on my head i can try something bit different today so i have this laney vintage amp and i was thinking that i could mic it up and then i will record my nord drum 3p through it and this has a purpose actually so with my Patreons, we decided that, of course, we are all going to do this 12 days of creativity music production challenge. But we also decided that we will add a little extra feature to the challenge, and that is exploring color in sound. So distortion, saturation, any kind of extra harmonics that we could add into sound and how we could learn about it and just explore it in our own music. So because my Laney amp is not the best, it adds a certain amount of, amount of color. Yeah, a little bit of crackle into it. I thought it would be perfect to explore together with some synthesizers. And of course, I'm a massive fan of big, very harmonic bass sounds. So I took out my Arturi microbrute and played around with some of the sounds. And obviously with my III headphones, I had a lot of freedom to move around as well in the studio while playing both of my Nord synthesizer as well as my Arturia. Obviously in this point, I just was sampling everything so that later on I can use Ableton Live and be very creative with the sound and use the clips that I want in my song. So now it's time to go back into the box and I'm just gonna add a wire to my III headphones, turn off the transmitter and connect it to my interface. So it's easy because now basically I can use them without using, you know, the charge or the battery, just normal like any other studio headphones. So loving it. Okay, let's get into Ableton Live and see what we can do with the basses. We're going to start with the microprute sample and I'm going to actually take it to arrangement view. And why do I do that? I do that because in here we can sample it really, really fast as well as tune it at the same go. So firstly, I have already harmonic plan in my head on how I want the work notes to kind of work around E minor. So I have first an E and then I want to have an A and then a G. And whilst we're here, I can use this to kind of tidy up the notes rhythmically. So I'm going to use the warp markers to also stretch every single note that they are correctly on the bars, on the beats. So I'm just going to make sure that all the notes are tuned correctly to E minor. I'm going to highlight all of them, Command J, Consolidate and then copy paste the clip into session view. Vibe, 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 vibe. And because the bass sound has so many harmonics, also taking a lot of space in the frequency range, I'm gonna you add an EQ already at this point and just cut away some of the low end to make space for the kick and rumble and everything that we created in the last day. Another way that I want to create some space in the frequency range and also making sure that the bass is not clashing with the kick and the rumble is side chaining it to the drums. So I'm going to add a compression, then make sure that it's connected and side chained into the kick 
just and not the whole kit and then I'm using compression so putting threshold down especially attack and release quite fast quite a lot of ratio to create this really nice ducking effect. I also want to see if one of my favorite plugins called Lifeline Expands would really make this sound even more interesting this way. So they have quite a lot of presets. I like going through them and just seeing what options there are just to kind of bring inspiration to me. And I'm finding this awesome, very wide space uh, preset. And so that the base is not too wide on the low end i'm adding a utility with the filters making sure that everything under certain threshold is going to be in mono Ooh, ooh, ooh! that's nice so with the plug paste that i played with the nord first i go through the samples find an area that i like and crop it I tune it, especially using it with the tuner, and then I take it to arrange my view again. I find the sections that I need to uh, tune it again, and also at this point is also good to warp it again. Just make sure that it's in the right rhythm. So I'm gonna tune some of the sections separately making sure that we are playing with again E and A. And then I'm gonna copy and paste one of the tuned areas to the end of the clip. Highlight it all, Command J, and then take it to the session view. I'm also gonna add some more volume to it. It has a really nice color actually to it. So I think recording through the amp was a really good idea. So I'm also going to add Baby Audio IHNY3 as well as a parallel aggression to the track. Using the EQ8 I can again filter away some of the lower frequencies that are unnecessary. Parallel aggression gives it a little bit more color and bunch as well as IHNY3. So together with the other bass. Brilliant. Yeah. <sighs> One of the hardest things as creatives we battle with is validation. And now I'm not talking about social media and how many likes or subscribers we have or how many Spotify listeners we have. But I'm, more, I'm talking about the validation that especially comes from people around us, especially our family and friends. I don't think we always acknowledge the fact that we never change from that kid who creates something and straight away wants to run to their parent and be like, hey, 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 look at, look at what I made. And the pride and the enjoyment because you enjoyed it so much and you're so freaking excited that you created something. It's so awesome. But what happens if we don't get that? The hardest thing for us to realize is that we need to stop asking validation from the people around us. They love us and they care for us and they care for what we do, but they're never gonna maybe match our energy with the validation that we are looking for. So find your people, find the people online, community, somewhere that you feel like you can go and share what you do and you get the validation that you deserve and the validation that you need. It's okay to feel like you want to sometimes someone to react like with a lot of emotion like oh my god that's so cool. That's okay to to want that. Look for validation from the right places and stop asking for it from the places that you know you're never gonna get it from. With that note oh yeah conversation continues in discord so come there here are my lovely, lovely patrons and see you soon. <laughs>